and let's give him a warm welcome over in the chat. And let me mi minimize myself down so I'm not so big. Wes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. Yes, I can. Chat, can you guys hear him? Um, let's take a look at my audio settings. And audio. Um, oh, wow. Maybe you can't hear me. I can give you a little bit more on my end if you need a little bit more. Cool. Um, there's got to be a way for me to pump this up on my end too, right? Pump, 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 pump the volume. Pump, 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 pump the volume. <laughs> oh, actually, wait. It totally is. Um, yeah, this should increase my decibels. Can so I will let louder? you know. I will let you know that the audience here has You're just been traumatized. Favorite, okay. So they've been traumatized watching a man eat a water bugs and a scorpion and all sorts of things. So now you need to bring them back from that trauma somehow. <laughs> do you okay. think do you think you're up to the task? <laughs> I think I think we are. I think we have some amazing performances coming up. Yes. Uh PJ can always bring us back from that can help us to this trauma that we have suffered through here with bug eating. Um and uh, you know, I can just tone it down a little and we can talk a little bit about some cancer research, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So welcome. Welcome officially to the live stream for the cure. Although I got to, can I flip, can, can I flip that? I can't flip this. Can I? I can flip it. What do you, is it, is it backwards? Uh, I think I can flip it on my end. Oh no, there okay, we go. Just, no, you're good. Okay, cool. Sweet. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, let's see what is going on over there in the chat. Uh, everybody says welcome, hello, Wes. Uh, Christine says we hear well. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, my, my! So you have and you have a whole a whole ton, and I mean an absolute ton of stuff playing. So I don't want to keep you from all the things you've got playing, the performances and everything like that. But uh, I just want to talk to you for just a moment because we're raising money for the Cancer Research Institute, which does work in cancer immunotherapy, training the body's immune system to fight all forms of cancer. You actually work in that field. So I definitely want to hear at least just a little bit uh, from you about, you know, what your work in the field of cancer research in the field of immunotherapy, because it's something obviously that we here are very passionate about. Um, yeah, it's an exciting new um, development in cancer research. Um, immunotherapy, it, was, it wasn't too long ago. It was only like couple years ago, 2016, 2014, uh, immunotherapy was considered uh, the science breakthrough of the year. Um, it has changed millions of lives worldwide. Um, it was only maybe a decade ago that only about 1% of cancer patients could actually be eligible to receive some sort of like checkpoint blockade immunotherapy, one of the common types of immunotherapy that I'll talk about in the next 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but now in 2018 data, 46% of cancer patients can now receive those similar types of treatments. And so we've really, people always talk about, oh, we don't see advancements from research. We donate all this money. We never see outcomes. This is an outcome. We, change has been made. More patients are getting these new treatments and they're having a really positive effect on outcomes. And I think uh, it was Dan, it's, it's Ashley's dad is getting immunotherapy now, right? That is correct. Yeah, Ashley. Uh, so my executive producer here, Dan, who, you know, you were just in the green room with, you know, his his uh, his girlfriend, her father is actually getting immunotherapy. And she was mentioning in the chat yesterday that it's night and day for him compared to when he was on chemo. So it's 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 such an amazing thing. When I first found out about it and when I first read about it, it immediately immediately I was I was I was like, this is it. This is what I have to support. And I found the Cancer Research Institute, which is an amazing organization. And um, thank you for being here. I really, really appreciate you being here to talk a little bit about it. And again, guys, he's got like a ton of stuff planned. So I'm going to let you do your thing, my friend, and get 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 to it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Um, obviously, cancer is a big passion of mine. That's why we're here um, to try to find a cure. Um, so I want to thank you for all the hard work you've been doing, Nick. You've been doing so much work. Nick's been trying to get all these shows together communicating between everyone. Meanwhile, he's got his day job. It's, he's up at all hours of night and getting emails from him at 2 a.m. This guy <laughs> not stop working. Uh, donate now just to, for how awesome Nick is. Press that donate button. He's, I will he's, take donations for that, ladies and gentlemen. I will take donations. But thank you. Thank you very much, Wes. That's very, very kind. Thank you. Uh, so what are we doing here today? So uh, I want to just welcome everybody. And we are 
co-streaming to YouTube because a lot of our original channel weren't Twitch users. They weren't uh, watching Twitch stuff. But if you happen to be a Twitch user and you're on the YouTube channel right now, go to twitch.tv slash Epic Film Guys, the main channel. It's much easier to donate there. It is, uh, you'll be able to watch the next program. You missed some cool bug guys earlier. Um, and I really think it's a place that you should be uh, doing this more interactive stuff there as well. Uh, but if you can't, if you have to be on YouTube, the easiest way to donate, there's going to be three ways we're going to raise money in this next 50 minutes, um, along with my friends here that you can now see on the screen, is going to be going directly to live stream for cure.com um, and donating there. If you're not on the Twitch channel, if you're on the Twitch channel, just click that button. Um, you can also, we're doing uh, two different fundraisers. We're going to be doing a song, a musical jukebox. Uh, Sandra Boza is here with us today, R&B and soul singer, absolutely amazing performer. I've known her a long time. She has a new album coming out, but she's going to be performing a song from a list of songs you can vote for at music.tumortalkshow.com. You can go to that, that link. Uh, it'll be up and about in the lower thirds. Um, and you can donate and vote for a song. Let's do an amazing song. You get to vote. It'll calm us down from these last traumatic bugs. And you're donating for a good cause. It's absolutely amazing. The other thing we're going to be doing, um, and I'll be closing in the next 24 minutes, is an art auction. Uh, Chandra Bradley has, Toronto artist has, we, she has painted uh, a picture um, just for us. We'll have some photos of that up in a sec. Actually, I'm going to transition to that right now, if I can. Maybe, maybe not. Yay. There we go. So the um, live stream for the cure right here. Um, boom. So we have this amazing painting um, by Chandra Bradley. Uh, go bid. Bidding's already at $60. Let's get that up to 180. I think this is an amazing painting. 180 easily for this work of art. Uh, we can ship anywhere except for Alaska and Hawaii for the Americans. Uh, but continental US and anywhere in Canada, go donate. Do that thing. Um, and I travel too. So if you're in Australia and you're willing to wait a bit, I have a conference next March in uh, Brisbane. I'll bring this with me and I'll ship it to you when I land. If you want to vote in Australia right now, uh, go bid for that. Um, so yes, go vote for songs, go bid on the auction, go donate live stream for a cure. Um, I'm here just going to introduce some of my peoples. I've already introduced Sandra. I'm going to introduce Jen, uh, Jenna Kalis is her new last name. Sorry, I always got her last name messed up. Now that she's <laughs> Um, she's going to be monitoring the chats. So she's monitoring the Twitch chat because I'm too neurotic and I won't be looking at any of the chats. But Jenna will let me know when someone asks a question. And I got Jennifer Stewart, actor and director, uh, Stratford, Ontario. She's in many seasons of Stratford. You can go Google her. She's very famous, more famous than me. And uh, she's going to help co-host this and make sure that I actually make some sort of sense. Um, so let's start a little bit right out of the boat and you guys can donate right now if you want to hear more cancer facts um immunotherapy why is this such an important thing why do we need to keep pushing for a cure and this comes back to the fact that one in three people in their lifetime will develop cancer this is not this sort of rare thing that oh if it will happen to me or is it going to happen to me it's going to happen to someone you know or yourself this is this is not an abstract concept and I think a lot of people young and who are healthy, especially people around my age, forget this fact. Um, both my parents have had uh, scares and runabouts with cancer. My dad and his knee, my mom and her colon, my grandfather at colon. Um, it's, 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 it's out there. And immunotherapies, um, especially some of these newer ones, what's so nice about them is that they have these applications that can work on so many different types of cancer. And the way they do that is thus. So... An immunotherapy is just any kind of treatment that works to get the immune system to do the job for you. So in cancer immunotherapy, that's to get the immune system to fight the cancer. But if you want to think of any vaccine, that's kind of like an immune immunotherapy, right? So if you got streptococcus vaccination, that vaccine is harnessing your own body's ability to fight streptococcus, whereas a drug might be an antibiotic. That might be a different type of therapy. So any therapy at all that is kind of used to get the immune system to do the job for you, that's an immunotherapy. Now, the holy grail of cancer immunotherapies has always been a cancer vaccine. People have been working on this since the, you know, the 80s. As long as we've been knowing about this kind of stuff, we've been trying to do something. It hasn't been very effective, partly because cancer isn't one disease, right? Cancer is very heterogeneous. 
Um, and by the way, anyone can interrupt me if anyone in the chat has questions, just ask away and I'll, I'll, I'll just take them as we go. Uh, cancer is very heterogeneous. Every cancer is different. Um, and even the same cancers are different. So one lung cancer in one patient and another lung cancer in another patient, um, they're different. So one vaccine was not going to kind of cut it. Um, we kind of talk about, is there going to be a cure? Well, we think, you know, I think Joe Biden, when we talked about the moonshot project, cancer moonshot was all about, there's going to be hundreds of different cures because there's hundreds of different cancers. Um, the two kinds of immunotherapies that are most popular right now um, are not these vaccines. They haven't been very effective. The two are something called checkpoint blockade immunotherapy. Um, and these use special antibodies that basically attack the breaks of the immune system. So in general speaking, you don't want your immune system to attack your own cells, right? Because that's going to give you things like diabetes, that's lupus, uh, you know, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. Um, and cancer cells, it's really important to remember this, cancer cells are your own cells. These, these aren't bacteria or viruses or funguses that have invaded you that your immune system should attack because they're different. Cancer cells are your own cells. So there's all these pathways in your body to stop your immune system from attacking itself. That's why, you know, that's why normally we don't all have autoimmune diseases. What checkpoint blockade immunotherapy does, and, I'm, and I could talk to a lecture on this for an hour, but very, very succinctly to be not quite accurate, but close enough is temporarily giving someone an autoimmune disease, making the body able to recognize and attack itself. Normally, cells have these little molecules on them, these little checkpoints. And even if a cell looks a little bit different, it gets a mutation, most mutations are harmless. So you don't want to go around killing every cell with a mutation. So these little receptors act like a secret handshake. Then like, I look a little different, but I know the code. Leave me alone. Don't kill me. And tumor cells have these Cancer cells, not even, sorry, I shouldn't use the word tumor, even non-tumor cancers uh, like multiple myeloma, lymphoma, leukemias, they have these on them too. And they're able then to evade uh, the immune response. And what checkpoint blockade therapy does is it blocks these checkpoints. It removes that secret handshake. And now the immune cells are like, hey, you look different and I can't see the code, I will kill you. And that's kind of how these work. And this has been the one that's been the most largest kind of advancements in the last five years have all been around these kind of checkpoint blockade therapies. Um, how is the Can current- I ask a question? Can I ask a question about yes, that? Yes, please do. Now, um, when you're doing this research, what do you use sort of to test, to test out your sort of, uh, I, for lack of a better word, you know, do you use mice? Do you use- you know, sure. how do you... um, so to test our hypothesis to discover these checkpoints, um, some of the okay. early work that won the Nobel Prize in 2018 was work done in the previous decade uh, done in mice. So that was done in mice originally, and then it migrated okay. to human clinical trials to see if it would also work in humans. A lot of things that work in mice don't work in humans, which is why uh, there's a great Twitter account called uh, in mice, and anytime some news publication says new thing cures cancer, coffee cures cancer, chocolate cures cancer, it just retweets it and says in mice because like they never cover that. Um, and I love that account; it's a great account and great question. Um, sometimes we move in humans because there's this. Uh, I'll briefly just say that if something fails in mice, we generally because we don't have the preclinical data to go forward. However, now that we know so much, oh, thank you for the donations. Uh, Umar, thank you for donating, Umar. That's awesome. Um, thank um, We kind of think about these things in a way that so many things, why do things work in mice and fail in humans? We've learned more about those differences. And now we have to take the, under the consideration if something fails in mice, might it work in humans? Is that really oh. necessarily a determinant, right? Uh, and for some types of treatments and, you know, new types of surgeries and all kinds of medical research, mice and rats are still our best models and it'd be unethical to jump to human trials right away. But for some things that have been shown to be at least uh, doesn't harm humans, there is this sort of idea that maybe we can be doing more clinical trials first, even though it might fail uh, for efficiency. 
in a preclinical model. Although I don't do that kind of work. I don't know anyone who does that kind of work. I've just seen people say that argument at conferences. Wes, well, so we have a couple of questions coming in off the live feed. Yes. Um, first one that came in was, uh, how is the pandemic affecting cancer research currently? And is it kind of uh, stripping resources when it comes to cancer research? Um, it's affecting clinical trials for sure. We can't, so I'm involved in a couple of clinical trials right now in Philadelphia and with my new group there. And we've had to stop patient recruitment because we don't want cancer patients coming into the hospital. Cancer patients are the number one risk uh, factor for COVID-19 related deaths. They are statistically more likely to have adverse outcomes and they are twice as likely to be infected. And going to the hospital um, is a point of being infected with COVID. So we have stopped recruitment for our clinical trials. Um, and because of that, that has affected cancer research. Labs have shut down. If you wanna go back to uh, Jennifer's point earlier about mice, um, you can't you know, have people working in these mouse colonies. All preclinical work has almost really shut down, except for a few of the really, really long longitudinal studies that take three or four years of like mouse colony work. The short stuff is all shut down. I have a lot of colleagues right now whose research has been halted because of COVID, uh, which is a shame. As for resources, resources, like physical things, I haven't seen that big of an impact because we've stopped doing a lot of the work being able to give the PPE to like ICUs and to ERs, giving the face masks away, it hasn't really impacted us because we're doing less with those things anyway, if that makes sense. And there's another question, but on the, along the lines of the pandemic, I guess, if somebody was concerned or was having symptoms, like what would your recommendation be? Should they be running into the hospital to get checked? Are there resources they could look into online or call their doctor to explain symptoms if they did have a concern right now about their health. For COVID and cancer specifically? If you have, well, it, yeah. if you have any symptoms uh, you think might be COVID related, um, you know. Well, like, no, I'm not talking about COVID, but if you had, if you were worried that you have potential, oh, cancer. potentially some other health issue, um, whether it be cancer related or not, what would the recommendation um, the, the, be? The, I mean, the recommendations right now are going to be based on your local area. So I don't want to give a broad thing. Different countries and different regions have different capacities right now. New York City being the epicenter it would have a very different policy than, say, Toronto, Ontario. If you're in Toronto, my recommendation would be called telehealth first. Get them to do um, a screen, and they can let you know if you need to go to your GP or go to the hospital. Things have calmed down a little bit in terms of how we are doing capacity and how we're treating COVID. In the early days in March and April, it was kind of insane because if you had a broken toe or you thought you had COVID, everyone was going to the ER. But now we have better protocols in, in many of the bigger cities that kind of make sure that COVID symptom patients don't go where the rest of the patients are going. Um, but I would definitely say for that very general thing, look at your local, uh, the local rules and stuff will be on your local city's website. So, you know, Philadelphia's website has it, Toronto's website has it. That would be where I'd go for, for your local information. Yeah, and there's one other question from the uh, live feed here. Um, just somebody asking in general, like getting a check, they get a checkup from their doctor every year, um, but as they get older, are there certain things that you should ask your doctor to be tested for? And does it vary as you, as you, get older or age? Sure. Um, cancer is, um, we do define it as a disease of the elderly. So you are at higher risk as we get older. Um, part of this has to do with um, mutations that accumulate over time. So every time your cells replicate, you might get one or two mutations, right? That might get, that might miss. And a single mutation isn't going to be harmful. Most mutations are harmless, right? Um, but if you get one that's bad, even one bad one isn't enough to cause cancer. You need a certain amount of pathways. And just statistically over time, you accumulate a lot of you know, uh, mutations, whether through DNA replication, whether through cigarette smoke, whether through environmental things you're exposed to, the sun, uh, more and more sun, more and more UV. Um, so we get more cancers as we're older. Um, that being said, um, things like colon cancer as you get older in males, family history is gonna be a big part. If you had a parent or grandparent with a certain type of cancer, then that's the kind of thing you want to bring up with your GP being like, I think I should be screened. Breast cancer, for sure, is one of those things. As people start getting older, if you have a family history, um, I, those are the things I look at. I know for men, prostate one is one of the ones. 
prostate and breast for men um, are still very, very hard for men to talk about. There's still a big stigma. Um, I mean, a lot of women's cancers, you know, 20 years ago were really hard, but now there's been so much good work that's been done to destigmatize some of these cancers. Unfortunately for men, it's still a little bit harder. Um, you know, there's still, uh, for reasons I won't talk about in this channel, because I don't want to, you know, there's no reason we don't have to talk about, you know, there's still a lot of homophobia. There's still a lot of stuff having someone go up your bum. Sometimes men don't want to bring that up, but prostate exams are really important. Um, All right. <laughs> awesome. So I'll just, we'll go to another type of <laughs> immunotherapy, which is what my new clinical trials I'm working on use. And this is called uh, CAR T cell therapy. If you've heard of CAR T cell therapy, donate now in the Twitch channel, click that donate button because CAR T cell therapy is very exciting. And this might be one of the therapies uh, that Nick was talking about that um, his friend might be taking. Here comes the money. Um, and that is um, a really, 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 really cool new therapy. Now this mostly is only for blood cancers right now. They've had a hard time making this work with solid tumors, but the other therapy I was talking about works well in solid tumors and less well in blood cancers. So here's the thing. Patient comes in, let's say they have uh, multiple myeloma, which is a B cell cancer, a cancer of the blood. We take some of their blood from their body. We spin it down. We isolate their T cells. We take their T cells, which is our type of an immune cell that can uh, kill things. We use, we reprogram them. We put in a gene that lets these T cells see cancer cells. We give them a whole bunch of tasty, yummy food and some growth hormones, and we grow up millions of them. And then we inject those cells back into the patient. Then those cells circulate around, and they hunt down and kill the cancer because they've been reprogrammed. And the patient doesn't reject the therapy because it's their own patient cells, right? These are their own T cells. So if, unlike a liver transplant or like a kidney transplant where you have to worry about rejection, you don't have to worry about that very much with these these kind of T cell T cell therapies. Here we go. I want, I want, um, I I will say money. that the downside to this type of treatment. Oh, thank you for the donation, Contrarian J. Thank you, Contrarian J. Ten dollars. That's amazing. That's a huge amount. Um, I will say that this type of therapy then is not off the shelf, right? Every single patient has to have their Here own. Comes made for them so it's not something that you can buy off the shelf it makes it very expensive some countries are interrupted tales thank you ten dollars amazing really appreciate that Woo! jen's giving me a thumbs up um i will say that it makes it quite expensive in the states where prices for cancer medications are already quite expensive unfortunately um and some of these ones can cost up to five hundred thousand dollars for a single treatment for a patient. Um, that's mortgaging your house, right? That's that's a lot of money. Um, and it, it has some. I mean, these some of these companies that make them will say, "Oh, we won't we won't charge you if the treatment doesn't work," uh, which is nice of them. But I mean, still a lot of money. Um, <laughs> And there are other countries where some of these treatments aren't offered specifically because these companies kind of would have to charge less money for them there and they don't want to devalue the product. And that, that's a whole other rant that we're not going to get into, but it's, it's a pain in the ass, uh, really, when you think about it. Um, but it's a new type of treatment. It's having very, very good effects. There's some forms of leukemia and lymphomas where you're seeing up to 80% response rates, which is amazing. And when these things work, boy, do they work? Like when we talk about chemotherapy, having a response to a patient, a response could be the tumors shrink a little. It could be the tumors just stop growing. It could mean the tumors are still growing, but they're not growing as fast as they were. That's a response to chemo. When these CAR T cells work, they, they work. It's the, people get cured from this thing. It's absolutely amazing therapy. It's why it's cost so much, right? Um, but it's such really good, exciting results. That's why everyone's so excited about immunotherapy. And we're really excited at University of Pennsylvania where I'm, we're doing um, CAR T cell therapy for multiple myeloma patients. And we really hope there's new types of therapy. Here comes the really money. Make it. Here we go. I want, I want. Here comes the money. Um, let's see what else is happening in the chats. Can I ask a question about your affiliation with the University of Pennsylvania? You can. Um, how does that work with the Canadian hospital and a Canadian doctor? And 
I'm just curious. About yes. That. So um, because of COVID, uh, people don't know this. I'm currently in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I am Canadian. And uh-huh. I've been helping out as best I can during the COVID um, lockdown here, um, donating my time where I can to help people out. Because uh, everyone's just, especially in the early days, everybody was overworked. There wasn't enough staff. Um, pay, at Toronto General, uh, nurses and doctors were being exposed to COVID, so they couldn't work anymore. There was a huge shortage of staff when we needed more staff. Um, but I have to self-isolate? Is that why? Yes. Like if if doctors are supposed to it then they have to be in quarantine for 14 days so then they can't work exactly and if they have any symptoms they have to be quarantined until their symptoms are gone and that they pass um it depends on the facility but usually three negative tests uh for covid to show that they aren't still going to be able to spread it um and in places like the uk i had one friend of mine um who works um she's an anesthesiologist anesthesiologists are really high impact right now because they need to be in the icus right Um, and she got COVID, but they didn't have in London enough tests for her to go to a testing facility because she didn't have a car. So she just had to stay home on her own. She knew she had all the symptoms. She knew she had COVID. She couldn't get to a testing center. Um, And then, so now all, now the ICU is short a doctor, right? So it's been kind of, kind of intense. So I'll just say for my affiliations, uh, I'm a tumor immunologist and cancer researcher at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm cross-appointed. So that means 75% of me and my time and, and what I do is through the experimental pathology department. That's where the CAR T-cell stuff works. And I'm 25% appointed to the pulmonary oncology unit. Where one, of, one of my bosses there, who's an amazing guy who I met down in Australia when I was working in Australia, actually. Um, and so historically, I've been working with Checkpoint, that first therapy I was talking about. That's what I worked on when I was in Perth, Australia. And now I'm working with CAR T-cell therapy in Philadelphia. Thanks. Okay, I didn't, cool. I didn't have a good thank intro, you. so thank you for that. <laughs> so you had to come home. You had to go back to Toronto when COVID hit. That's uh, what happened. I was already in Toronto when COVID hit, and I got stuck. Okay. Yeah, I, I came border here for comes. different reasons. I came back to Toronto, and um, then the border shut down. <laughs> and I, and I'm an international, and I'm on a on a visa for the work in the states. I'm not an American resident. I'm not an American citizen. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of re-entry guidelines and protocols for those kinds of sort of people like me. And the university shut down. And there's that. Right. And there's that. Yeah. Um, so we are getting up to 5.30, which means it's almost time for Sandra Boza to give us a beautiful song. Um, let's take a quick gander at... Um, if anyone has voted, because I didn't look. Hopefully, someone has. Let's see what we got. I will refresh this page. Do, 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 do. And I have to be in my login one. Okay, one second, guys. I have to go over to a different tab where I'm logged in to see the results. Uh, Sandra, why don't you tell us about your new album? Okay, I can do that. Kill time. Um, I just released an album in February, uh, February 14th, actually, Valentine's Day. That was not intentional. Um, it's called Falling Away From Me, and it's it's out. It's available on all the places, uh, Spotify, iTunes, or you can get a physical copy from me. Um, I can mail it to you like it's the 70s. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm very proud of it. It's my first full-length album. It's about eight tracks. Um, so check it out. I've had some play on the CBC. Um, I was supposed to be touring this summer and then everything got canceled. So <laughs> trying to promote it the best I can. So check it out. It's kind of like, uh, I don't even know what it is. It's like soul, R&B, a little bit of pop thrown in there. I was just in Memphis right before the border shut down for the International Blues Challenge. So that was fun. I do a lot of blues. That was really cool. Stopped in Nashville, played the Bluebird Cafe. That was a lot of fun. Anyway, so I'm super happy to be here. Um, I've definitely been reconnecting with my acoustic roots since I'm not allowed to see my band. So that's been the silver lining of this. Um, am I still talking or have you figured out? I got it. <laughs> I appreciate what you're doing. That was great. That was fantastic. Cool. Great filler. Great filler. Um, okay. Oh, wait, filler. I should tell you where you can get the things, the album. SandraBoza.com, B-O-U-Z-A. That's where you can find all the links to the album. But sorry, go on. Yeah. Okay. So we have a three-way tie right now in the voting. So we have 
a three-way tie in first place with Big Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell. Uh We got Waterfalls by TLC. And we got Sexual Healing healing by Marvin Gaye. So here's how we're going to solve this. All right? We're going to... We're gonna we're gonna pause for five minutes before we do the song, and I'm gonna just announce the winner of the auction, and then in the next um, five minutes, if you donate on the Twitch channel um, right now, we'll count those votes. Type in the chat the song you want. The link is still scrolling up around um, music.tumortalkshow.com. Go find the song there. Just type in the chat which one you want. I will tell you those, and money. that will be the winning song. We only have three, actually. Only three songs. Here Sexual Healing, money. Waterfalls, and uh, Big Yellow Taxi. Those are your three choices. It's- awesome. Thank you for the vote, uh, for the donation. Um, type, in the, type in the chat. We'll count up from those three. That will be the song. You have five minutes to do that. Donate, chat. Let's go see who wins this amazing art auction. If you pay extra money for waterfalls, I will do the rap. She'll do the <laughs> rap, guys. Also, I will need, depending on what song you choose, I might need to retune my guitar. So that's 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 a thing. Cumulative. Cool, cool. All right, so let's transition back to our auction already live in process. We are at oh, I hit refresh because refresh is written. Eighty dollars, guys! You're killing it! You're killing it! That's amazing! That's it. We're definitely going to hit our target for our segment. We wanted to try to get 180. Or we're definitely uh, getting closer above that now, thanks to everyone on Twitch has donated. Um, 62% of the way for the whole weekend being done, and we still have all day tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to close this auction. Um, you know what? I'm not going to announce the winner because I just realized that I don't necessarily have the permission to uh, say publicly their name. So I'm not going to say who won it, but I'm going to close it. If you had the $80 bid, congratulations. Here we go. You won. And you're amazing. Thank you so much for supporting <laughs> Cancer Research. Uh, it's an amazing painting. Uh, I had a bid in earlier, and I'm kind of sad I didn't win. Uh, Sun Power Pod, thank you for donating $10. What's, new album hype. Oh, nice. Waterfalls. Sun Power Pod wants waterfalls. That's another vote. And thank you for the donation, um, Sunflower Pod. All right. So uh, I think that's going to mean um, based on the. So do you have to fly this painting down to Australia now? Is that that's what everybody <laughs> wants to know? <laughs> oh, I'll fly down. I'll fly down once once the borders open again and Australia lets other people in. I'll, I'll fly down. Hundred um, percent. Okay, Sandra, are you good for? I'm looking at the votes here. Waterfalls is killing it right now in the chat. Um, and donations for waterfalls from the people I've looked at, really high. You good for waterfalls? Oh, oh yeah. I just need to retune. All right, you retune. Um, and then guys, I'm- my um, <laughs> so so I had General Sows explode in my uh, in my refrigerator just now. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but I'm here. I'm back. I'm back. I can't oh. wait. Uh, all right. So she's retuning. Um, if you have any cancer questions at all, immunotherapy questions. Ask below. I will uh, read those while the tuning is happening. CHTO says he thinks the bidding is frozen because he bid more than 80. Interesting. Did you bid more than 80 and that it does the incremental bidding like eBay? So like if somebody bids 90, then you bid 100. I think it auto ups unless you tell it you want to specifically bid more. But I'll double check that. Thank you, CHTO. Uh, we're gearing up soon for Boza. Cancer questions, looking through the chat. Um, I will say I have that... a question. Yes. Uh, when you do your clinical trials, how many patients do you usually use at a time? That is a great question. So the size of the trial definitely varies. Um, so one of the trials, one of my, my former boss just completed was a phase 2B. So we're definitely looking for efficiency in that case. And it had just over 100 patients. It was in mesothelioma. So mesothelioma is a cancer of the pleural lining of the lungs. It's mostly associated with asbestos exposure, but it's a rare cancer. So you recruit as patients are diagnosed. The recruitment process for a disease like that can take, you know, a year or more. Um, Something like uh, multiple myeloma, which is a little bit more common, but still rare. uh, You might recruit them a little bit faster. 
one of the trials I'm working on in Philly um, is a phase one. It's a very smaller trial. It's going to use two different CAR T's at the same time, which is cowboy medicine. It's very interesting. It's only going to be like 10 people. Okay. So you have to wait till you have all the people before you can start. You start them as they come in. So you might get your first meso patient. They'll start their treatment. You might wait a month to get your next one. Then you put them on the trial. So by the time your whole clinical study is done, which could take years, you know, the first patient you had, you already know their outcomes for like a year and a half or something. Right. Okay. Okay. That's cool. I didn't know that. Thank you. you. But you need a lot of patients to get meaningful numbers. One person, a single anecdote of a time, you know, I drank orange juice and I got better. That's not science. You need to have hundreds of people drinking the orange juice to say orange juice cures cancer. Right. Uh, Boza's ready, I think. So I will switch to Boza's tab. And whenever you're ready, I will mute my microphone at least. Thank you, Boza. Donate now. Donate now for Boza. Boza's amazing. Donate now. Here comes the money. Good. Here we go. Do it. Thank you, Nigel.
late retribution. I know that you're gonna have it your way or nothing at all. But I think you're moving too fast. I think you're moving too fast. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for the information. And when you said it was killing it, I thought I'd just throw the rap in. That was nice. <laughs> killing it. We love it. We're getting a lot of positive comments on the, on the chat. Oh, cool. Nice to hear. Everyone's loving it. Everyone's loving it. I've seen Sandra cool. perform live a few times now, and... It's always amazing. It's always amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks right. for the work you do. I always feel like I'm a, um, just, you know, I don't do anything to, like, I'm blown away by what Wes does all the time. And the other day we were having a conversation and I said, I feel like I don't do enough. And he said, I know that feeling. And I thought, how can you know that? <laughs> how? He's such a phenomenal human. And we go and play video games and he tells me about cancer research and I tell him about like gigs. <laughs> uh, you're super important to the world, Wes. Thank oh, you for what you you're do. Too, you're too kind. I'm just one of many hundreds of cancer researchers doing their part, doing what we can. Uh, we need, that's how we progress change, right? Uh, the status quo for any cancer is the status quo until we do research, we develop new treatments and we push that boundary farther. And all, some of my biggest heroes are people who do that. My, my, one of my former boss, still kind of my current boss, Dr. Anna Nowak, a huge, not just a mentor, but someone I really look up to, I admire as a role model. And uh, she does way more than me. I don't know how she does it. And that's how I sometimes feel like I could be doing more. Um, do what I can. But I guess we all do, right? Everyone in the lives is just doing what we can. It's just sometimes hard to see that. Um, yeah, people in the live stream are saying you're you're lifting their spirits, so uh, that's important too, Sandra. But obviously, oh. we obviously we know how important Wes's work is as well. Thank you. I really, I, I'm getting all teary. Really, <laughs> like, I appreciate that because I I I want to do more. And this is cheesy, but I really that makes me so happy. You just made my day. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well if I didn't have music in my life, my mental health would be would be much worse. <laughs> yeah, you know, my sister's a music therapist, and uh, music is really very, very, very powerful. Uh, so yeah, that is that is a good thing to keep in mind. Try to remember that when I feel like a lazy musician. <laughs> I think people forget that about the healing and health a lot. So there's, it's more to it than medicine, right? Um, and not just music. Yeah. Uh, the Hospital yeah. for Sick Children used to have a therapeutic clown program for the for the kids. I think was very helpful. And um, I had friends who were in that program and not just for the children, um, but for the parents. Cause when you have pediatric cancer patients, you always have two patients, right? The child and the parent and the parents only interacting with nurses, doctors, healthcare professionals. And sometimes that therapeutic clown was the one person they could talk to who wasn't a healthcare professional. And they opened up about so many more things about how, you know, they'd have to stay, you know, they're staying with their kid at the hospital. They've missed so much work. They're, they get fired. How are they going to pay the bills? And the, it acts at such a different level beyond the medicine, right? They're, we're humans and it's a human journey. And I talk about this on the tumor talk show all the time is that, you know, it's people, right? So thank you, Sandra, for reminding us. Of that. Thank you for having me. Um, I believe we only have a couple minutes left. Um, so I will say thank you so much for the donations. Keep donating as the stream goes on. Stay on this Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Epic Film Guys, if you're not there already uh, to watch the next show coming up. Nick has put so much work into this. So I want to thank Nick again for both inviting us on and for all his work. So yay. Thank you, Nick. Yay. Um, Absolutely too kind. Thank you to everyone that has been donating, that's been interacting. And I mean, I mean, literally just wonderful. And I really appreciate, especially all the information. It, it's absolutely wonderful to hear all the information about cancer research, which is something again, that we're very passionate about. And can we get another hand for, for Sandra again? Just that amazing. Thank you. Thank you Sandra. I know people in my group can't hear Nick, <laughs> but Nick was talking. Yeah. So. <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> we can't, we can't hear over. Vertigo. <laughs> Nick was saying how amazing Sandra is and how awesome the two Jen and Jennifer's and Jenna's are. And thank and, you, Wes, yeah. for all the work you put in on your end as well, because I know you put a lot of work in setting all that stuff you got going on up as well. Oh, you're quite welcome. <laughs> it's for a great cause, and I'm happy to be able to help. Thank you, Nick. Um, I will just shout out some other random stuff until we get kicked off. Um, I assume the next group's already in the green room getting ready to go. You can kick me off whenever you want. But um, I think I'll talk a little bit about um, maybe just, if anyone has experienced this in the chat room, radiotherapy. Uh, radiotherapy, I'm not going to talk about everything about radiotherapy. We have videos on that on the Tumor Talk channel if you want to learn about radiotherapy. Uh, YouTube slash C slash Tumor Talk. But people don't realize that radiotherapy can make tumors more immunogenic. So I'll, I'll link this to um, immunotherapy. And they can, radiation plus immunotherapy can be quite beneficial. Tumors can be, um, not only do they become more immunogenic so the immune system can see them better, but it can also stimulate different changes in the immune system to begin with, which can then trigger an immune response. So even not even having an extra sort of... Um, adding an immunotherapy agent, you can get an immune response. There's this rare, rare thing called the abscopal effect. It's Latin. It means off target. And it's really, really rare, but it's been seen consistently since the 1950s. And that is if you irradiate a tumor in a person, let's say in their, in their left arm, um, tumor shrinks because you've irradiated, you've blasted with photons. But tumors somewhere else, they start to shrink too, even though you haven't treated them with radiation at all. And in about the early, maybe late, you know, like 2011-ish times, people started hypothesizing, even though it's been seen since the 50s and no one knew why, that this was an immune response. What was happening was you were breaking down the tumor and the cells were being blown up and all these new mutations were being shown to the immune system. Those T cells I was talking about, they'd get in there, they'd clean up the mess because T cells go wherever there's damage. Like if you just cut yourself, that's tissue damage. T cells are going to go there. And they'd see these things and be like, oh, you look different. I'm going to kill cells like you. And those T cells expand and grow and circulate the through the blood. And we go like other tumors that look like the thing you just saw and start attacking it. And that's why tumor immunology is such an interesting and exciting field right now. Because the immune system really plays a role in a lot of cancer therapies we've been using for decades and decades, centuries for some of these things. The, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s. And... Um, absolutely amazing. Chemotherapy agents were learning work in ways that affect the immune response. Um, you know, killing off some immune cells that were actually holding back the immune system from attacking. There's some therapies, there are, there are drugs used for brain tumors. And if you, and they, and they kind of sort of work in certain, in certain ways. It, chemotherapy is a weird area. But when people test those brain tumors, we learned like a decade later that that drug wasn't even crossing the blood brain barrier. That drug wasn't even getting to the tumor, but it was, it was shrinking the tumors. So in adults, we stopped using it in children, but in adults, we kept giving it because it worked. We didn't know how, we didn't know why it was doing something else. It wasn't killing the tumor the way we thought it was like it wasn't a Petri dish. It wasn't affecting the cancer cells directly, but now we hypothesize it's having an effect on the immune system and the immune system is then able to kill the tumor. So it's, it's, it's an exciting field. I think it's great that we're, we're doing the research. It's why we're here raising money for cancer research. Understanding these things helps us build new therapies to help figure out why these effects are happening, make them better, and get a better response. So thank you all again. I really appreciate your time and your donations. And I will sign, leave it off to Nick. Oh, Nick's not at his desk. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, if you like our stuff, you can follow us too. We're at Tumor Talk, uh, Twitter at Tumor Talk, uh, YouTube at Tumor Talk, Facebook at Tumor Talk, um, all those places. You can go like and subscribe that stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, and maybe we'll probably have those. Of. I have one more question before we go. Yeah. What, what would be your dream, sort of, as far as cancer research? Sort of, what is the dream finding, or you know, something that would crack open? you know, something that you haven't been able to crack open yet. And for sure. So thank you, Lucy, for the donation. Awesome stuff. Answer your question, an off the shelf 
solution that would let us do something like CAR T, where we could personalize the treatment for the specific cancer, but something that you could just add two ingredients off the shelf, put them together, and give them to somebody. I think that would be that would decrease the cost, which is hurting a lot of the personalized medicines, but make them a lot more robust and make them a little more applicable to a lot more cancers. Amazing. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nightbot, for that tweet and shout out. I like bots. Bots are great. Um, I will say another <laughs> thing with, um, while we're still on the air, I'll talk about another immunotherapy sort of connection, and that is back to the vaccines. While we haven't had a vaccine work in clinical trials like we'd hoped it would for treatment, there are vaccines that help prevent cancer, right? HPV vaccine, for example, um, helps stop cervical cancers, head and neck cancers, mouth cancers. We were already seeing in Australia a decrease in that rate of cervical cancer since uh, mass vaccination has started. And more and more countries are expanding their vaccination programs for HPV. Ireland, two or three years ago, just expanded it to start vaccinating the men. And this kind of comes back to that stigma. It's like, why weren't they? Why weren't the boys being vaccinated to begin with, right? Um, but they are now. It's really important because HPV causes cancer in men as well. And also men can spread the virus to women. So it's really important to vaccinate the men as well. Um, yeah, so there's all these different avenues that are helping us through tumor immunology and immune responses for cancer, just even beyond direct tumors. Good question. Yeah, it's not, it sounds like preventative sort of treatment or medicine is, uh, is important too. You know, don't wait for something to happen, sort of stay on top of it, stay on top of your health. You know, I think that's really important. Yes. Get vaccinated, you know, yes. Yes. if you can. And I agree. that's even like as a, as a performer, preventative massage, physiotherapy, all that kind of stuff. So that you sort of are ready so that if, and when you get injured, it doesn't take as long to heal, you know, or, or you don't get injured because you've done your preventative care and treatment. So true. And and we talk about that. I think, I think depending on the country you're in, there's a lot of preventable cancer. That's one of the things I'm working on a project right now, which I won't get into because this isn't the platform for that, but it's all about preventable cancers. And we, you know, everyone knows don't smoke. I'm not going to write a book saying don't smoke, but there's, there's lots of other things. 98% um, of people in the UK know that smoking causes cancer, right? But like, I was only like, 36 or maybe 76, maybe I have the numbers mixed up, knew that obesity caused cancer. So how do you start to change the habits to do the preventative care if people aren't even aware it's a cancer risk? 13 different cancers are now associated with obesity. So, I mean, are obesity numbers at the rates of smoking? No. Smoking's coming down 1% per year, which is great, but obesity is going up. Can we, now obesity is not at the rate of smoking yet. But can we stop that before it reaches it? We know now, right? We know better. Can we do better? Welcome back, Nick. And uh, thank you again to Wes and to your amazing panel of guests. Thank you all so, so much for being here. Uh, I am sorry that I had to duck out and clean General Sows up off of my refrigerator. <laughs> the things that happen during live events. Uh, so, yeah, I, I absolutely uh, appreciate you. Again, thank you so much, Wes, for all the hard work you put in, doing the art auction, doing the the, the bids for donations, for songs, for, for Sandra and everything. Thank you so, so much uh, for everything. Uh, and to everybody that's just been blowing it up, just absolutely just blowing it up uh, in the chat. Yes. We are now at $6,500, $6,500 uh, for a future immune to cancer, which is absolutely a beautiful thing. So thank you all so, so much. Everybody out there uh, who donated, who is listening, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, just absolutely appreciate it more than we could ever possibly, possibly express. I really, really appreciate it. So let's just have a group of four, give a little applause to the chat room. Thank you everyone for donating. Yes. Thank you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> And Wes, before before everybody uh, before before we run away from you here, uh, just please uh, let our audience know, and then your panel as well. Please have them plug anything that they need or want to plug or whatever. Uh, let us know where we can find you on the web and what you got going on right now. Perfect. I think I plugged my show while you were cleaning already, so I won't replug it. But if Sandra and Jennifer would like to plug their stuff quickly before we leave, Jennifer, do you have 
I guess your theater's kind of been uh, canceled because of COVID. <laughs> oh, I, I've lost your audio, Jennifer. We'll switch to Sandra. Plug your website and album again. Oh, there we go. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, the theater is shut down. So we don't know when uh, when we're going to be up again. Maybe 2021. Everybody's online trying to do some classes or, you know, trying to create musicals that you can watch online, but we don't know. That's so, nice. so I don't really have anything to plug right now. <laughs> just, well, just, uh, I, have a toddler, I have a toddler, one year old, so I'm, I'm busy with him. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> um, yes, I was trying to look up. I should have had a CD that I could hold up. Sandra, Sandra Bozamusic.com, right? Yeah, Sandra Bozamusic.com. Oh, no. Okay, Sandra Bozamusic.com, B O U Z A. Check it out. I have a new album. I have a picture of the new album. Show us the photo. I'll make it big. Show you. That's what it looks like. Sandra nice, Boza. good album art. Follow away from me. <laughs> The summer we're all completely canceled so any any support is welcome check it out download it stream it whatever thank you so much for having me and uh yeah thanks everyone this is very cool and good work and thank you very much thank you guys thank you so so much you guys please have an absolutely wonderful day and everyone stay thank safe you. thank you and with thank you <laughs>